So it's my pleasure to introduce Carla Decker, our host for this afternoon. Carla is chair of NCBA Clusa's board of directors, and she's president and CEO of SkyPoint Federal Credit Union. Carla, the floor is yours. Thank you, Liz, and good afternoon and welcome to the 107th annual membership meeting of the National Cooperative Business Association, Clusa International. It's always such a pleasure to see so many fellow cooperators. So first, I want to welcome our members to the virtual meeting. And as you can see, I'm actually presenting live from NCBA Clusa's headquarters in Washington, DC. Along with our virtual audience, we are happy to welcome members to our headquarters. And just over in the Workies Conference Room, they're there for a watch party and an in-person reception. On behalf of the NCBA Clusa Board of Directors, I thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to be with us this afternoon. As members of NCBA Clusa, your participation is vital to ensure that we continue to move the association forward together as we use the cooperative business model to build a more inclusive economy. The theme of this year's meeting, rooted, resilient, and ready, speaks to the cooperative community's ability to leverage the cooperative values and principles to impact today's economy and society. You should have received an email that included the agenda for today's meeting. It also should have included our 2022 annual report and other related information. We'll be referring to those documents throughout the meeting today, so please keep them handy. To begin today's meeting, our bylaws stipulate that we have quorum, with the observation that we have 15% of the total votes held by membership participating online and in person this afternoon, we have that quorum. Therefore, it is my distinct pleasure to call the 2023 annual membership meeting to order. Our first order of business is to approve the minutes from our 2022 annual membership meeting. Please check your email material for those minutes. And I'm going to entertain a motion to approve the minutes. To motion, please type I so move in the chat. Irvin, thank you so very much for moving. We have a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? We do have a second, yes. Oh, wonderful. We have a second. Thank you so very much. So now that we have both the motion and the second, is there any discussion on the motion regarding the minutes to the 2022 annual membership meeting? For those of you in the Borges Conference Room, if you have any questions, Joe is there with a laptop, ready to help you add any to the discussion. All right, I'm not seeing any comments or questions in the chat. So let's take a few minutes, uh, moments to go through the voting process. A poll should appear on your screen. In the open poll, all of those in favor, please reply yes, and all of those opposed, click on no. And for those of you in the Voorhees Conference Room, raise your hands to indicate a yes vote. Staff is going to tabulate and enter the results in the chat as well. Wonderful. We have a unanimous vote in favor of approval of the minutes of the 2022 annual membership meeting. Thank you so very much. The next agenda on um, the next agenda item is the treasurer's report and then followed by the audit report. So first, I'm going to invite Devin Furman to present the treasurer's report and following his report, Patrick Connealy will walk us through the audit report. Good afternoon. As treasurer for the NCBA Clusa Board of Directors, it's my pleasure to summarize the financial performance for 2022. I'd like to call your attention to the financial section on page 20 through 22 of the 2022 annual report. We measure revenue of NCBA Clusa in two ways, membership services and awards from grants and contracts. 
For 2022, NCBA's membership dues revenue was 688,000, and the results were a slight decrease over 2021 membership revenue of 692,000. Membership dues for the current year, 2023, are performing 7% above prior year, with a collection to date of 738,000. We'll continue to collect dues and grow membership revenue in 2023. In the grants and contracts program area, revenue decreased to 26.6 million in 2022 from 28 million in 2021. This was a result of delayed startup of new programs with continued effects from COVID travel restrictions and closure of six program awards completing the duration of service in 2022. We continue to experience consistent performance in our grant and contract funding and continue to pursue new business opportunities. Our forecast to secure new awards looks very promising and we plan to grow in 2023. Another way to evaluate NCBA CLUSA's financial performance is in net income and net assets. Here, NCBA consolidates three key inputs, net income from operations, equity in the net profits from Cooperative Business International, where NCBA CLUSA has a 9.97% ownership stake, and equity in net profits of Dot, Dot Cooperation LLC, where NCBA CLUSA has a 50% ownership stake. In 2022, NCBA CLUSA's net income was 90,000 from all sources. Net income in 2022 includes without donor restrictions, 319,000 and 229,000 with donor restrictions, released yielding a reduced operating income of 129,000 and an investment loss of 39,000. NCBA CLUSA's net assets without donor restrictions in 2022 were 6.2 million at year end from 5.9 million at year end 2021, a $319,000 increase after consolidating NCBA's equity shares and other adjustments. NCBA CLUSA has effectively managed its liquidity and cash positions in support of its business operations. The bank line of credit outstanding loan balance is zero, and 2.5 million remains available to support program activities where advanced funds are not provided. The line of credit is collateralized with donor receivables and 100% recoverable and has limited risk to NCBA CLUSA. As I've outlined, NCBA CLUSA's financial statements continue to reflect stable results demonstrating continued positive operational performance overall. Thank you, and I'll now hand it to Patrick Keneally We'll give you an update on our audit. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Devin. As chairman of the Finance and Audit Committee, it's my responsibility to report to members the results from the independent audit of NCBA CLUSA's financial reports. Let me start with some background of the firm engaged to perform the audit. The independent audit firm engaged to perform audit services is Markham LLP. They conducted NCBA CLUSA's prior year audit in 2021 as well. Markham is a national firm with a focus on providing auditing and accounting services to the nonprofit industry. In addition, they specialize in working with recipients of government funding. Markham performed the audit on NCBA's consolidated financial statements in accordance with GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, as well as the audit of federal awards in accordance with generally accepted government auditing standards, which is required for NCBA CLUSA as a recipient of awards from the federal government. The fiscal year in 2022 audit has concluded and the final audit report will be issued in mid-May prior to the filing of the IRS Form 990 Exempt Organization Tax Return Filing. The Finance and Audit Committee met with the auditors this morning and do not anticipate material changes to the results of the 2022 fiscal year audit report. There were no reported disagreements with management and NCB NCBA received a clean, unmodified opinion on their 2022 financial statements and a clean, unmodified opinion on the federal awards audit. 
As a result, NCBA will remain a low risk auditee for the federal awards audit in 2023. That's good news. The Finance and Audit Committee reviewed the audited 2022 year end results today with the auditors and were extremely pleased with the positive year end results and the progress NCBA CLUSA has made with strengthening its internal controls over financial reporting and ensuring the integrity of the association. The final audit report will be distributed at the Board of Directors meeting in June and will be published in the NCBA CLUSA 2022 annual report on the NCBA CLUSA website. A special thank you to Doug, Val, and all the staff for their commitment to continuing to be good stewards of the association's assets. And now I'll turn it back over to Chair Decker. Thank you, Patrick, and thank you, Devin, as well. If you have a question about the treasurer's report or items within the audit report, please let us know in the chat. And we're now going to open the floor for questions. Again, those in the Voorhees conference room, please use the laptop right where Joe will signal to enter any questions. Seeing no questions in the chat, the floor is now closed. We thank everybody for that, for both treasurers and um, auditors report, thank you. We have reached now the point in the agenda for the chair's address and the CEO's message. So we'll start with me. Today, I would like to spend a few minutes considering the theme of our meeting and NCBA CLUSA's work in 2023, rooted, resilient, and ready and how the work of your board in this past year will help propel our mission and vision. Before that, I do want to recognize and thank my fellow directors who devote their time, expertise, and passion for the cooperative community to move forward that mission and vision. I would like to root my message in NCBA CLUSA's mission, which is to develop, advance, and protect cooperatives. Our vision, which the board reaffirmed in the last five-year strategy is to help more people use cooperatives to build an inclusive economy, especially for people who have, left who have been left behind by a shifting economy. This connection to our mission, values, and principles makes co-ops different. A lot of non-co-op businesses these days claim to care about the community, their employees, and the environment. But the fact is that they are rooted in the interest of their owners who in the case of typical corporations are outside investors with little stake in the community or the people who work in the business. Co-ops root, roots are in their members and the communities where those members live. This distinction means co-ops generate different outcomes. Co-ops tend to be more resilient. They provide broader based economic opportunities and they invest more dollars in their local communities. Along with the senior staff, the board in this last year took on the task of completing the next five-year strategy. Our work was rooted not only in our mission and vision, but also in the cooperative identity, those values and principles common to the entire cooperative community. And in the spirit of cooperatives, our work is rooted in our members. With our members in mind, the five-year strategy focuses on four lines of work, advocacy, public awareness, thought leadership, and development. And underpinning all this work is member engagement. NCBA CLUSA's work is also rooted in the international cooperative community. As members of the International Cooperative Alliance and IC Americas, we remain connected to the broader cooperative community. So we are nourished with new ideas and have an opportunity to participate in important global conversations impacting cooperatives. In our shared values and principles enshrined in the statement of the cooperative identity, 
that sets our movement and business model apart. As you know, at the 33rd World Cooperative Congress in 2021 held in Seoul, South Korea, the International Cooperative Alliance kicked off a global consultation on this statement with the goal of strengthening understanding of identity and ensuring that it remains relevant to our times. The Cooperative Identity Advisory Group, which includes cooperators from around the world, including our own director, Irvin Kroll, has been tasked with stewarding this dialogue. Last year, people from 136 countries participated in a survey exploring cooperators' awareness of the statement and how well it has stood the test of time. And now the advisory group has launched a toolkit for co-ops and associations to help you and your members participate in a more intensive way in the continuing consultation between now and the end of November. To download the toolkit, please visit coopidentity.ica.coop and make your voice heard in this important global dialogue. NCBA CLUSA is planning to utilize this opportunity for consultation later this year. More on that will be coming in the next few weeks. Our work in 2023 and beyond is also rooted in NCBA CLUSA's 107 year legacy of advancing cooperative businesses. Cooperators led by Peter Warbas established NCBA CLUSA in 1916 to expand the influence of cooperatives by creating a place for the co-op community to work together. Since that time, just about what the cooperatives in the US has been able to accomplish, just think about that. Today, in one, one in three people in the US are members of cooperatives, including over 110 million members of credit unions, over 40 million members of rural electrical cooperatives, and the majority of the farmers in the US. Rooted in this legacy, more and more workers are forming cooperatives. People are exploring how to use platform cooperatives in the gig economy. And people from historically underserved communities continue to use cooperatives to empower themselves in their economy and society. And now a request. To capture this opportunity to make lasting impact, we need to grow our community. That means we need more members. Please consider co-ops in your sector or community who are not yet members of NCBA CLUSA. You can do so by checking out the current membership on our NCBA website. That link is going to be placed in the chat. Reach out to those cooperative colleagues and invite them to be part of our association. Or let the staff at NCBA know so that we can expand our community and our impact. Finally, I again want to thank you all for all you do for cooperatives and for your members. And for being a part of NCBA CLUSA, what you do for the entire community. And now I would like to introduce our president and CEO, Doug O'Brien, for his remarks. Thank you, Carla, Madam Chair. I wanna thank you and the entire board for your leadership and commitment to the cooperative community. Your passion for and dedication to the mission of NCBA CLUSA continues to inspire and make such an impact. Like Carla, I wanna consider the theme of NCBA CLUSA's work in 2023 rooted, resilient, and ready. Carla talked a good deal about how NCBA CLUSA's work is rooted, rooted in our mission and vision, rooted in the cooperative identity, and rooted in the legacy of this association's 107 years of work, including 70 years of work in international development, as we will hear about in just a few minutes. I wanna to talk to you about how being both rooted and resilient makes us ready ready to carry on the work of cooperatives in 2023 and beyond. Because of these strong roots, we are ready to advocate for good cooperative policy, policy that helps more people use co-ops to solve problems and capture opportunities. This means working with the Congressional Cooperative Business Caucus and others in Congress for co-op development resources for small business administration policy that does not discriminate against cooperatives, and for farm bill policy that builds on the awesome history of rural people using co-ops to fully participate in the economy. We are ready to help people develop cooperatives both here in the US and around the world to use co the cooperative principles to become more resilient in the face of a changing climate and food insecurity. 
we are ready to tell the story of how cooperatives make an impact in local communities and across the nation. This means capturing better data and sharing it in a compelling way. Data such as that collected by the U.S. Economic Census that continues to include a cooperative question on this official five-year measure of U.S. business and economy, a question that exists because of NCBA CLUSA's efforts. We are ready to evolve our cooperative community so that our co-ops are more inclusive and equitable, so that our co-ops can benefit from everyone truly participating in our unique form of business. We are ready to consider how to use the sixth cooperative principle, cooperation among cooperatives, in today's context, so that cooperatives can grow their business and make deeper impacts in their community. We are ready to ask hard questions about what role cooperatives should play in the rapidly changing information and technology environment, questions that focus on artificial intelligence and big data, the answers to which will define cooperatives' role for the next generation. And we are ready to engage our members in new and exciting ways. For example, we now have hundreds of members who are part of our online community, Co-op Circle, and we look forward to bringing back a hike the hill during Impact Week in October, so we can feature the most effective NCBA CLUSA advocates for better co-op policy, that is, our members. And speaking of impact, let me take a minute to preview this year's conference. We look forward to welcoming people back to Washington, D.C. for the sixth annual Impact Conference on October 4th and 5th in person at the National Press Club. Check out the link in the chat and look for registration coming in June. We will continue the theme of rooted, resilient, and ready. Rooted in our shared identity, cooperatives continue to demonstrate the resilience of our business model. Stronger than ever, cooperatives are ready to take on the most critical challenges facing people today, commu facing people, communities, and businesses today. From helping people deal with a changing climate and threats to democratic institutions to addressing persistent inequality against a backdrop of global conf conflict and natural disasters. Cooperatives hold promise and meaningful impact. The week will culminate with the annual Co-op Hall of Fame banquet and induction ceremony on Thursday, October 5th, where we will celebrate an amazing set of cooperative heroes. Check out the link in the chat for more information on the Co-op Hall of Fame. Now, finally, a note of thanks. We could not do any of this work without the amazing staff of your association here at NCBA CLUSA, and we couldn't do it without your participation and membership. By choosing to be members of NCBA CLUSA, you are standing up for the cooperative community. And I'll echo Carla in asking that you help deepen our impact by recruiting more cooperatives to be members of NCBA CLUSA. Please just reach out to our uh, membership team to let us know how we can help. By being part of NCBA CLUSA and helping us grow, you are helping us ensure that we can move forward together. Thank you. Thank you, Doug, for your address and for your leadership. And next, I would like to introduce Tamla Blaylock, our Vice President of Cooperative Relations. Just going to share some exciting updates regarding our membership program. All right, thank you, Carla. Hello, everyone. My name is Tamara Blaylaw, and I am proud to serve as the Vice President of Cooperative Relations for NCBA CLUSA. My role is membership and engagement, and I'm here to talk all about all the opportunities that we have that are new for our members here in fiscal year 2023. The first one I want to talk about is the Co-op Circle. Co-op Circle is an online community tool that allows for communication across cooperatives. It was inspired from the online communities that were created during the quarantine period of COVID. Co-op Circle is currently the only online cross-sector co-op community to connect on important topics that are relevant to all co-ops from membership, DEI, culture, governance, and general idea sharing. The goal is that we want to hear from you. We want to give you the opportunity to not only talk to us and to the inclusive staff, but also to talk to each other, because so many of the conversations that you have with us organically are on a variety of different topics. 
the online community empowers our members and stakeholders to form cross-sector connections. Um, and if you go to the website link that we have for the annual member meeting, you'll see the opportunity to either log into your co-op circle profile or to join it. To connect more dynamically, you've also created co-op circle empower hours or happy hours. We interpret the term happy hour as an empower hour. It isn't time to get together to discuss what we are doing in the co-op world with our members and to connect with each other. We attend for these empower hours to serve as empowering and positive space. These conversations are hour long once a month to connect in an online Zoom room, to discuss key ideas and opportunities. These monthly events are often held and scheduled on the first Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you all online. The next one is actually this Friday, uh, May 5th. Um, it'll be a government relations takeover. <laughs> this also brings me to another great thing that we have launched um, last year, but are doing more so this year, and that is our volunteer leadership councils. At the end of this annual meeting, we will announce our board directors, and that is very exciting. For so many of us, our road to board leadership comes through other volunteer leadership opportunities. We have a few of those opportunities already in action, including our Cooperative Economics Council and the interagency working groups with our Government Relations Director, Leah Ned. We are expanding that community of engagement, and we want to do so intentionally. Volunteer leadership, serving on a council or committee, is where I first learned governance. And as a governance nerd, it's a great start. Where I first understood what is needed for board service and how to influence organizations and create better opportunities for support. Volunteering is where I learned many of the skill sets I use in my job now. And I was able to practice them and volunteer leadership. About these councils, we have a few um, where we are um, looking for members now. That's our purchasing council, our co-op to co-op council, which had a town hall last week, and our principal six council. There are two councils that are further developing their charters before opening up their membership and they include the Co-op Development Council, the Platform Startup and Small Co-op Councils and the Marketing Council. So do you have, a, do you have to be a member to join an NCBA, NCBA Inclusive Volunteer Co-op Council? You do not have to be a member, you do need to be a member to serve as a co-chair to ensure that we are supporting our members. To make sure that we are being as inclusive as possible, um, and to create space to encourage new membership, we do have advisor spaces available on each of our councils. Advisor spaces are available for people who are in co-op organizations that are not yet members, and my inclusive term for that is stakeholders. It's an opportunity for us to be intentionally inclusive to ensure that we have all voices in our co-op community represented. So thank you so much for your time. And for those who have been active in NCBA Clusa, we have been so honored to have you. And for those who are engaged co-op community, community co cooperators, who are stakeholders in our community, we are glad for your engagement as well. We look forward to seeing you on Co-op Circle as a co-chair, as a member or advisor for one of our volunteer councils. So from this, I will let you join our annual meeting. Thank you so much, Tamala. Next on the agenda is an up update on our advocacy work. Every year our, in our membership uh, survey, you tell us that advocacy is the most valued work that we do together. Because of that, we wanted to spend a few minutes hearing from Ali and Ed, NCBA Clusa's Director of Government Relations. Thank you, Madam Chair. And on the advocacy front, we are excited to have a full team here and have been appreciative of all of our dedicated cooperators and their engagement in recent months and are looking forward to the year ahead. I'm delighted to update you all on how we are engaging with the cooperative community and policymakers to improve the policy environment for all kinds of cooperatives, including by increasing access to capital, reforming the 2023 Farm Bill, and leveraging the new investments provided by historic pieces of legislation for cooperatives. Last year, we welcomed two new staff to the government relations team here, both myself and our government relations coordinator, Joe Serencioni, who's with the folks in Voorhees now. With the full roster, we are moving full steam ahead to ensure that co-ops aren't missing the bus in light of new and historic legislation that passed last Congress. The Inflation Reduction Act, which recognized the critical role of co-ops in the climate context, provided new funding streams to leverage the potential of cooperatives across sectors, from investments in renewable energy deployment to housing improvements, and financing for cooperatives and businesses all over the country to make infrastructure investments 
that mitigate the impact of increasingly adverse climate events. Our team has worked to identify those opportunities for our members, and we released a full-scale report to help connect folks with those opportunities through our Inflation Reduction Act Guide for Co-ops, which you can find in the chat now. And we'll continue to publish updates as those funding announcements roll out, so keep an eye on our advocacy page on ncbaclubs.coop. As a community, we have learned many lessons from the deployment of COVID relief dollars and saw the potential of how transformative access to capital through the Small Business Administration or SBA programs can truly be for cooperatives. Now, despite many challenges, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program demonstrated that the agency has the ability to finance cooperatives without relying on a personal guarantee which is a method of securing a loan that simply does not align with the cooperative ownership structure. And last year, we were delighted to see members of the Bipartisan Co-op Business Caucus introduce the Main Street 2.0 Act, which would have required the SBA to change this prohibitive requirement. We are working in collaboration with the co-op community for the reintroduction of this legislation, and we'll need your help on that. While advancing this issue in Congress, we simultaneously continue to engage with the SBA on the regulatory track. Last year in December, during a rulemaking in which SBA proposed changes to those lending requirements for their financing programs, which includes the 7A program, NCBA CLUSA led efforts to mobilize you all our members and secured support from over 140 organizations and cooperatives across the country through a public comment letter that called for the removal of the prohibitive personal guarantee for cooperatives. We hope through these continued efforts that we can grow support among policymakers for this critical and long overdue change. This year, we're also focused on reauthorizing the 2023 Farm Bill, which governs some of the major co-op grant programs both domestically and abroad within USDA, this includes the Rural Cooperative Development Grant Program, Rural Energy for America Program, and Food for Progress, along with the USAID Farmer to Farmer Program. We are in conversation with a number of coalitions as broad consensus will be a major factor in getting a farm bill passed, and NCBA CLUSA is actively leading a coalition of rural stakeholders to advocate for and unlock new resources to build capacity in our rural communities. Additionally, we're pushing to increase funding for co-op grant programs, including the USAID Cooperative Development Program and Rural Energy Savings Program. The bipartisan support for these programs among members of Congress will be crucial in these efforts, and we appreciate the dedicated work of our members in their communities and through communication with your representatives to build support at all levels of government. We are so thankful for that support in the last year and are relying on each and every one of you to advance the cooperative movement through advocacy. If you're looking for ways to make your voices heard, I'll share just a few small things that you can do right now. Ask your member in the U.S. House of Representatives to join the Bipartisan Congressional Cooperative Business Caucus. The link in the chat will take you to a letter and show you the current members of that caucus. You can ask your senators and representatives to support that legislation that would increase access to capital for co-ops and oppose any efforts to cut new investments in co-ops. And third, invite your city council members, your county commissioners, your state legislators, members of Congress and senators to your co-op. Show them all of the incredible impact that you're having on your community, your neighbors and our economy. We know that cooperatives equip individuals with the tools to drive a robust, prosperous, and more equitable economy. And as your voices in Washington, DC, our team is committed to carrying this message forward with your continued cooperation on these efforts. We are truly here to serve you and are only an email or phone call away. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you all. And with that, I'll hand it back to our chair. Thank you, Leah. And now, as we continue to move forward with the program, I am very pleased to introduce Alex Serrano, our Senior Vice President for International Programs. Alex joins us with a special update about our global programs at NCBA CUSA. Alex. 
Thank you, Carla, and good to see you and uh, good to see everybody here online. Um, we actually had a very special visit to the Dominican Republic that Carla and several board members participated. So very happy to uh, uh, be here again and speak about uh, a major milestone, which is our 70th uh, anniversary this year of international development work. Uh, the work began in 1953 uh, when our organization at the time operating as the Cooperative League of the USA, uh, many of us know as CLUSA, responded to requests from cooperative leaders in India for assistance in strengthening their co-ops. One of our first projects was helping the Amul Dairy Cooperative enter the pasteurized milk market and paving the way for its phenomenal growth into Indian, India's largest food brand. In many ways, uh, what Organic Valley, Land of Lakes, and many other cooperatives here in the US uh, have done. Uh, this transformation began with a simple cooperative concept of adding value to a product and using the revenues to reproduce the model and create one pasteurization plant after another. Starting in 61, and CBA Clusa's work also revolutionized the nation's fertilizer industry helping create uh, IFCO, uh, what is known as Indian Farmers Fertilizer Cooperative, which is today the world's largest member-owned fertilizer cooperative with over 50 million members and about 36,000 cooperatives. Since then, NCBA Clusa has worked in more than 100 countries in Africa, Latin America, and Southeast Asia, helping communities become more food secure, build resilience, create economic opportunities, and strengthen cooperatives. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our donors, our partners, and our members for helping us to provide the tools for a better, more sustainable future for our clients, cooperatives, communities, and millions of people around the world. I'll also like to thank our staff who are at the heart of our work. Uh, in fact, today we're thrilled to bring some of their voices uh, from the, the three continents where we work. Uh, we'll be hearing from them throughout our next activity this afternoon. And to walk us through that activity, I would like to hand the mic to, to Tamala. OK. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. And to our NCBA Clusa family and membership that you know is out there, we know that you are highly motivated by the products of cooperatives. So we figured the best way to test your knowledge is development work of our development work is with the promises of Cabot Cheese. So we want to thank Cabot Cheese for being a sponsor of our international development activity today. During this portion of our annual membership meeting, we'll be giving away six $75 Cabot Cheese boxes to the top winners of our 70th anniversary quiz. So how do you get started? How do you have this play in this activity? Get out your phones or open the browser window and type in www.kahoot, K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T. Again, that is www.kahoot dot I-T. Then you're going to enter our game pin. That is 939-1442. Again, that is 939-1442. Um, please enter your real email address at the prompt. Otherwise, we cannot, um, be, we cannot give you your Cabot Cheese Box if you win. So we need real e email addresses when you enter the game. You can make up whatever name you want to, but please make sure you use your real email address. So some quick reminders before we launch this game. First, you get points for accuracy and speed. So answer questions correctly, but also answer them quickly. Second, the images are hints, so pay close attention. We are very cooperative principle six and seven in the creation of this game. And finally, we'll pause after each game question to hear from one of our key staff members behind development work, as Alex Serrano shared with us. So make sure that you're going to www.kahoot.it and you're entering the game pin 939-1442. And as soon as we get some really good entrance in there, you will see the game right in front of you. Looks like it's coming soon. This is very exciting. It's game time. Oh, look at that. We got to, I'm a winner. I love these names. Great names. <laughs> Cheese for me. <laughs> Co-op Rich. Emma, we have a Cabot fan number one. See some board members, I think. Co-op Pete, love to see it. That's a great start. All right, any more players? Oh, there we go. She's Bandit. P6 Lover, rock on, ROC. <laughs> hey there, right back at you. 
All right, getting some interest in. Hemp orations. I'm gonna leave that there, but thank you for playing. So happy to see you. Happy days. That's right. Happy is a choice. Happy day always with our NCBA CUSA membership. Wow, good cheese. Yes. Was well, there any bad cheese? I don't believe so. Cheese the day. Vegan with regift. You know what? I love the core <laughs> spirit. Again, concern for community. I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Y'all are so much fun. Okay, the game is starting. All right, question one of our memory. Three, two, one, and here we go. Question one, the CLUSA approach empowers people to create and sustain locally led solutions. What is the CLUSA approach based on? Is it red, stakeholder capitalism, blue, the seven cooperative principles, yellow, the inclusive economy? Let's see, accuracy and speed, accuracy and speed. Oh, look at that. Looks like almost everyone has got their answer in and it is time. Okay, well, most of you correctly guessed the seven cooperative principles. The inclusive economy, it is in to be inclusive vision. So we honor your response. We love it. Let's see the scores. And so far, it's a close tie between John, I'm a winner, Co-op Pete and KZ and Emma. Excellent. All right, to learn more, we're going to, let's hear from Papa Sin. NCBA CLUSA Senior Technical Advisor who developed the CLUSA approach. My name is uh, Pat Sen, and um, I have been working for NCBA CLUSA in different African countries, including Niger, where we piloted what we call the CLUSA approach in 1985. As you know, the CLUSA approach is rooted in the cooperative principles. And a good example that I can give you is the governance, USAID funded governance flagship project that we had in, in Ghana some years back. In, in that project, um, we supported the formation of an apex of local civil society organizations civic unions that brought uh, CSO, civil society organization together to support government, uh, local government authorities to deliver quality service to the citizens. These civic unions adapted the cooperative principle as the guiding rules for decision and actions. And it was very effective because not only that they ensure the delivery of quality service to the citizen, but also they made more transparent and more accountable local government to the, to the citizens. At the end of the five year program, in, a, in an evaluation uh, requested by USCID, you could read the statement, which is, we found that the NCBA program has a real has made a real difference in the life of the cities of the ordinary citizens in Ghana. And I think that it was really because of the adaptation of the copy principles to the civic union. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Papson. We love to hear what's going on and that's having great impact in Ghana. So as we see, it's a close game. And now we're going on to question two. All right, in 1984, this NCBA CLUSA board created entity built relationships with companies like Starbucks and McCormick in Southeast Asia, great markets for farmers. Is it red, CBI Global? B, I mean, um, blue, rise, or yellow, Cooperativa Cafe Tim Moore? Oh, a little slower to answer, but we're answering. We're seeing activity and movement. Okay, what's going to happen? Ooh. And it, the correct answer is red, CBI Global. So next for our video, we at Sam Filiacci, our longtime regional director for Southeast Asia to give us some background. So let's hear from Sam Filiacci. My name's Sam Filiacci. I've been with NCBA for <clears throat> over the last 40 years and uh, 
working primarily in Southeast Asia. Way back in 1984, nearly 40 years ago, a very visionary NCBA board created CBI, or Cooperative Business International. CBI has since then answered many of the international development challenges that, challenges that we face on a daily basis. In our area of the world, we are tasks and our projects to increase the overall well-being of our beneficiary families, who most often live in uh, poverty. We are often successful in increasing their productivity, growing new and improved crops with large and viable international markets. The question is, however, uh, that would often, always come up is, can we process and sell the crops? How and where? Can it be done profitably? Who would be the best international customers to target and how can we access and convince them to work with us? By doing such, would this uh, NCBA created entity succeed in bringing large numbers of subsistence farmers to, um, to a much better place in their lives? CBI in partnership with NCBA and numerous USAID, USDA and other international donors has done this very successfully reporting, resulting in billions of dollars of sales and lifting hundreds of thousands of farmers out of uh, out of poverty over the last 40 years. We've created long and lasting relationships with some of the world's blue chip food and beverage companies, such as Starbucks, McCormick's, and several others. It has now become one of the founding examples of government private part public private partnerships, hundreds of millions of dollars in USA Global Development Alliance grants, and the basis for projects in several NCBA development countries. My apologies, I was on mute. Let's take a look on our leaderboard. And we have KZ at the top, co-op Pete, John, Paul, and Chris. So this is everyone's game. Let's go to question number three. This USAID funded program is one of the best ways for NCBA inclusive members to get involved in our development work. Is it red, sustainable agriculture volunteer project, blue, Peace Corps, yellow, farmer to farmer. Remember our pictures are clues. What clues are the pictures giving you? And for those who attended the co-op to co-op volunteer council town hall last week, have some insight onto this one. Let's see, correct answer is farmer to farmer. And I love that it was like near unanimous. Love to know that that connection is being made. And let's see, um, now we're gonna find out more from Cynthia Mendoza, our country director for this program in Peru. So let's hear from Cynthia, there she is. I am Cynthia Mendoza, Country Director for NCB Clusa's Farmer to Farmer Program in Peru. Our Farmer to Farmer team recruits volunteers who are experts in a broad range of fields, from agriculture to organizational development to marketing, to support cacao and coffee cooperatives increase competitiveness by solving issues along the value chain. I invite you to embrace the challenge of taking part in a Farmer to Farmer assignment in Ecuador, Honduras, and of course, Peru. Okay, thank you, Cynthia Mendoza. And if you want to take her up, you can sign up on volunteer for the Co-op to Co-op Volunteer Council to recruit volunteers to serve in programs like Farmer to Farmer. So let's look at the scoreboard. Okay, KZ is on. KZ is still on top. Co-op Pete is on fire. He's on a streak. And then we have John, Paul, and Chris. Still anyone's game. It leverages out. So let's move on to question four. All right, leveraging our 70 year legacy of development work in 100 countries, our first US project will impact what? Is it red, historically underserved farmers? Is it blue, seniors in need of housing? Or is it yellow, youth in persistent poverty areas? So, what is the picture giving to you? What is the picture serving? Red, yellow, or blue? Let's see. Answers are in. Okay, another near unanimous, it is indeed red. Um, historically underserved farmers. Here to give us this correct answer and learn more is Taya Evans, director of this project. Good afternoon. My name is Tia Evans and I'm the project director for our USDA funded Strengthening Cooperative Capacity for Historically Underserved Farmers. Our project supports historically underserved farmers, ranchers, and their communities by enhancing our community-led cooperative development ecosystem in the United States. We're already leveraging NCBA CLUSA's international development legacy and expertise 
in a domestic setting. This project is continuing to help close the gap between underserved farmers and their ability to access the programs at USDA to benefit the growth of the producers who are historically underserved and economically distressed in farming. We strive to support the cooperative development ecosystem by providing them with opportunities for grant writing and access to capital and technical support to empower their communities and contribute to resilience and equity in American agriculture. All right, thank you, Tia Evans. Love to hear about it. All right, and let's see what's happening on the scoreboard. KZ is unstoppable, but now we have Paul, Co-op Pete. I'm a winner, we see you, and Chris. So it's very close, very close. On to our next question, question number five. In Mozambique, we provide farmers with key data that helps them make informed decisions using what tool? Is it red, community radio programming? Blue, drones. Yellow, Co-op Co crop tracker farm management software, red, yellow, or blue? Red, yellow, or blue? Last one. Three, two, one. The correct answer is blue drones at yellow co crop tracker farm management software got the most interest. All right, so let's turn to Carolina Renoso Pietres, our country director in Mozambique, for the answer. Hi, my name is Carolina Reynosa Peters, and I'm the country director for NCBA Clusa in Mozambique. NCBA Clusa has been in Mozambique supporting small farmers increase their production volumes and expand their market access for 28 years. Mozambique is rated as the sixth country most vulnerable to climate change in the world. These changes are becoming increasingly more palpable to farmers, large and small, across the country. The most recent example of the severity of climate change is 2019's Cyclone Itai, which displaced close to 2 million people and caused an estimated $3 billion worth of damages. As part of our support for the recovery effort, we began using drones equipped with special infrared cameras that allowed us to monitor crop stress and identify which crops could be salvaged post cyclone. Since then, monitoring crop development by drones has become an integral component of the technical assistance and advisory services we offer farmers supported by our programs. This has helped us reach a wider network of farmers, provide them with more accurate information as to the status of their crops, and identify potential issues such as pests and diseases early enough so that we can help them address them and protect their crops. All right, excellent. We have heard from three to four different continents. And now let's see who our final winners are. So we know our top three, out of the six are RPR, whoever that is. And then number two, I'm a winner. Number two and number one, I have a feeling of who this may be. It is Co-op Pete. Oh my goodness, KZ is not in the top three. This is record making. It's like the NBA playoffs. Thank you all so much. This is super exciting. I hope that you all had so much fun. We enjoyed engaging with you in this way and hope you got to engage and hear from the voices of everyone in our international development team. So excited to bring you this educational edutainment opportunity and membership will be in touch with our winners about your cabbage cheese boxes. So back to the library and back to you, our chair, Carla Decker. Oh, I see you, Doug, there. So back to you, Doug. <laughs> okay. Well, that was great fun. And back to our chair, Carla. And congratulations to the winners. Absolutely. Congratulations to the winners. Thank you to Cabot. Thank you to Tamala and to all the staff around the globe who were so generous in just sharing information with us. That was a lot of fun. All right. So um, let's see. I think that we go next to what is. Get to the video there. Yeah. Yep. The co op 5 race. Yep. The co op 5K. Yep. Perfect. Two, three. <laughs> so it's uh, great to see just you know so much friendly competition here um and we want to express congratulations to this year's co-op 5k runners the walkers and all of the volunteers and thank you for helping to raise vital funds for cooperative development foundation let's see i just want to make sure that we saw the video it's 
It's coming up. Okay. So Liz, I don't know if you're out there, but if you we could see the video from the co-op 5K, that would be great. Good afternoon. My name is Kirsty Boyette, Associate Director for the Cooperative Development Foundation. Welcome to the Co-op 5K award ceremony. There's nothing like a good run or walk on a spring day to lift the spirit, especially when you know that you're raising money for a good cause. Let's take a look back at what happened this past week. our highlight reel of cooperators from coast to coast as they participated in this year's race. Now you may wonder what CDF does with the money raised from our fundraising events. In 2022, CDF worked to honor the past while helping to build for the future. Because of your contributions, more than $150,000 was awarded in grants to fund events, scholarships, and cooperative education across 22 cooperatives and organizations. Our Disaster Recovery Fund provided a focal point for the U.S. cooperative community to come together to raise funds in response to the devastating crisis in Ukraine and some of the worst hurricanes in recorded history. More than $140,000 was directed toward funding the development of the first secondary cooperative in the U.S. for worker-owned home care co-ops and a digital marketing and online learning platform for cooperatives in Peru and Guatemala. In 2022, CDF also began a journey of recognizing the unsung co-op heroes of the past by honoring Ella Baker with induction into the Cooperative Hall of Fame. Looking to the future, we partnered with NCBA CLUSA to support a group of 23 new and emerging co-op leaders and scholars in their professional development designed to deepen engagement, encourage collaboration, and foster connections. None of this work would have been possible without your help. On behalf of our staff and our board of directors, thank you. Because of your support, CDF was able to provide nearly $1 million in resources to cooperators worldwide. When we do well, we can do more good. And your partnership with CDF empowers us to build a stronger and more inclusive future. It's now time to announce this year's winners. So without further ado,
And that brings us to the end of our program. Congratulations to all of our winners. It's never too early to start training for next year's race. So save the date for another hybrid co-op 5K from April 27th through May 4th. See you next year. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, it was great to not only be able to congratulate the winners and look, see all of the enthusiasm, but also just to thank the 593 cooperators who actually came up to support the race this year. They did so both virtually and in person here in Washington, DC. And thank you to CDF for the nearly 1 million in grants distributed through its family of funds in 2022. Okay, we're gonna move along. Um, and next on the agenda is the much anticipated results of this year's board election. So as a reminder, there were five board seats available this year. We appreciate everyone who took the time to vote in the election. Um, obviously your participation is key to getting strong representation on the board of directors. But without further ado, I'm going to welcome uh, the chair of the nominating committee, Michelle Shry, who is going to present the results of this year's election. Michelle. Thank you, Carla. NCBA CLUSA members in good standing have cast their votes over the past couple of months to elect five candidates to the 2023 Board of Directors. Your participation in the election really helps us set the strategic vision for the organization, ensuring that NCBA CLUSA remains a dynamic voice in the cooperative space. Before I announce the results of our election, I first wanna thank everyone who chose to step forward and run for the board. We're really lucky to have a robust and talented slate of candidates this year. Uh, and we deeply appreciate each and everyone's willingness to serve. Now, I'm happy to present the results of the 2023 NCBA CLUSA Board of Directors election. The following candidates, uh, who have won election are listed in alphabetical order uh, and have been elected. Those are uh, Cornelius Blanding, Juan Fernandez, Esteban Kelly, Emma McCormick, and Karen Zimbelman. I, I do want to take a moment to recognize Michael Droke, who is a candidate in this year's election and demonstrated a willingness to serve uh, but was not elected. We look forward to Michael uh, uh, re-engaging with elections in future years. Thank you again to everyone who participated. And Carla, the floor is yours again. Thank you, Michelle. And congratulations to all of the successful candidates. We look forward to the expertise and energy each of you will contribute to the board discussions uh, together as we work to deepen the influence and the impact cooperatives have in communities here and around the world. Let's see. Now we're on to additional business items. Um, and I want to ask if there is any other business before we adjourn. You may use the chat feature to ask any questions or to leave any comments. And for those of us joining us in the watch party, please uh, reach out to Joe, um, who has the computer um, there in the room to post any chat, any uh, comments to the chat. Esteban might have some business. Esteban, we see you on camera. Awesome. Um, I want to see if KZ can join me as well. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you for the support and being reelected. Um, some of you might not know this, but in the NCBA bylaws, we have term limits for our chair. The term is only two years. So um, starting as of next month, Carla will be stepping down as the chair because um, that will be the conclusion of, of her time. And so I just wanted to take a moment during the new business opening um, to recognize her service and her leadership and all her contributions over the last couple of years. Um, they have not been easy years with obviously navigating all of the um, pandemic challenges uh, with COVID, but also working really closely with our staff at NCBA CLUSA to shape up our next five-year strategy and um, and helping to steward this vision for an inclusive economy. So um, I know we're all, many of us are virtual, but those of you in the room um, can maybe share some applause and appreciations uh, for Carla, um, also for bringing so much heart and, um, uh, and vision to the work here. I'm going to pass the mic over to KZ. And say a little yeah, 
I want to just add a couple other uh, points that might not be visible to our members. Um, Carla is one of those true cooperators. Um, I've come to know her since I've been on the board, uh, but she goes far beyond just serving, representing you uh, on the NCBA CLUSA board. She also serves as a delegate on the board of the ICA Americas and um, has also uh, worked, which is a regional entity for the International Cooperative Alliance. And I, I know also not from personal uh, experience, but from seeing photos that she's um, been out traveling a lot on behalf of our membership to Spain uh, last June and to the Dominican Republic. I think uh, Alex or, or um, Doug mentioned uh, the trip to the Dominican Republic where Car Carla also represented NCBA's members. And so I just want to add my personal thanks uh, for just an awesome co-op leader to be part of our um, board and has um, done a yeoman's job this last two years and we'll miss having her chairing our board. Well, thank you both so much. It's completely unexpected and I <laughs> so appreciate it. Um, obviously, uh, I am in, in this role, um, the executive committee plays a, you know, a huge support in uh, leading the, the board of NCBA CLUSA and Esteban Kelly is our first vice chair. Casey is our second vice chair. Um, <laughs> Devin Furman is our treasurer. Jill Tomlin is our secretary and our immediate past uh, chair. Um, Eric Kroll also joins the executive committee. And so uh, together with our board, I think we, we have really moved um, what is the task of, of setting the, the strategic direction for NCBA CLUSA in 2022 was, was that year in which we chartered the, the next five year strategic course. And I can't be more thankful for you and your friendship um, and to everyone on the board truly really, for your dedication and, committed to, and commitment to NCBA CLUSA. KC mentioned um, some, of the, some of the trips and I think that it's, you know, as, as we are in the US, we know each other, we, we rally around each other because we know our work. Um, it's equally important to know the work that NCBA CLUSA does internationally. I've been mean, for the past 70 years. And um, I'm really proud that during this particular annual meeting, we got to see just glimpses of, of that work and know the people who are, who are behind it. What is great about being in the field is that you actually get to, to connect with the people who benefit from that work. And that's just, uh, you can't put a put a price or or really describe it um, with, with justice. Um, so thank you so very much for the opportunity to have um, led the board of NCBA. I look forward to continuing to serve with all of you. So thank you. That's really I think that that That's might it. just <laughs> <laughs> wrap up the meeting unless there's anything anybody else wants to add. Um, in terms of new items. Um, yeah, thank you. Adding, adding thanks, I think, in, in closing with thanks is, is very appropriate. Um, and on that note, I also want to thank the sponsors of the um, annual membership meeting, um, Cobank, Cobank and um, Nationwide. Thank you so very much. Um, but thanks all of you for joining us today, for being here, for not only um, you know, participating in what is a business meeting, but also having fun in the process. Thanks. <laughs> and with that, I will officially close out our annual meeting. Thank you all. See you around. Thank you. Thank you.